get opened up here. Um, let's start out. We always start out with a confession of faith. I have something I want to share with you. A clip here in a moment. Uh, if you have your Bibles, if you'll lift them up and confess with me and join with me, we believe it's the only the word that's received by faith that prospers your life. Jesus said one time, he said, take heed how you hear. What's he talking about? Did anybody hear the same? Evidently not. Did anybody get the same results with their prayer? Evidently not. They came to Jesus, Luke 11 and 1, and said, you teach us how you pray. So there's different levels available to us if you're hungry here today. Amen? You lift your Bible up and repeat with me, this is my Bible. I am who it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I believe within it is the power to change my life. I believe in my heart, therefore I confess with my mouth that today, this day, after having heard the word of God, my life will be changed forever. Never again the same. Never, never in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I have a clip here. I was, I was a little reluctant to share this with you. I wanted to show you this clip here that we have. Y'all have it ready? Y'all have y'all ready? Got it ready? Go ahead and go with it. This was a time of ministry in Ukraine. And this was the word that was spoken of. I want y'all to hear it. I had to go back and go over it myself. I don't know if I need to hear it. Y'all need to hear it. This is where this thing whole start with this quest with the glory of God and the fire of God. Yes. Amen. Y'all got it? You're hungry. Только если вы на самом деле жаждете. And you are saying, I am not walking out tonight. И вы говорите, я не уйду отсюда сегодня. Unless I got my portion. Пока я не получу свою порцию. Then before you come, wait, wait. Тогда, подождите, прежде чем вы выйдете. I want to ask the pastor. Я хочу спросить пастора. And uh, pastor пастора Гэри. And the other senior pastors who is here. И старшие пастора, как кто еще здесь есть, старшие пастора церкви. Пожалуйста, выйдите сюда и помогите мне молиться. All senior pastors who is related to to bishop. Пожалуйста, все пастора, которые э, связаны с епископом, выйдите сюда. Выйдите, пожалуйста, мы будем вместе сейчас молиться о людях. And we will then pray for you afterward. И затем мы помолимся о вас, пастора. I want to say something to you. you. See what I have taught you already know. But when I looked at you, I saw that God is going to take this message and work it into your spirit. And when you come back to US, you are going to start demonstrating how to shake cities by the power of God. Remember, they laid hands on them to receive. There will be a release coming out of you as you lay hands on your spiritual sons and daughters. It will explode in your church. It is not a visitation. It is a permanent move. You have had God coming in season and then it was quiet for a season but God is saying he is moving into your house the glory is gonna come and sit on you and your congregation and out of your inner man will flow a revival and pastors from all over US will come and ask you how could that happen will not preach a message, you will be the message. You will demonstrate it. This was just like a, what do you call it when you start a machine? It was, it was the sparkle, but it will explode on the inside of you and you will see it all over the Bible. And you will become so full of believing that such as you have, you can give unto them. And revival will break out wherever you go. Everything wherever is about to change. Yeah, because there will be a demand on you as you have not imagined. You are not about to be a pensioner, go on pension. You are not about to settle down and thinking your successors is going to do it. No, no, this is when you start working. It's going to be so supernatural. But it will flow out of your spirit. And you will understand it. Because you will know the Holy Spirit and how to work with Him. Now, Father, I release this. Fire! Thank you, Jesus. Let Him be a carrier of revival fire. Revival.
да будет он носителем огня пробуждения в Америке пробуждение в Америке снова не сила через то, но духом твоим Now, my beloved pastors, Сейчас, возлюбленные пастора мои, мы сейчас поможем друг другу и вместе помолимся за людей. А, то есть люди будут двигаться туда? There was an impartation that was made into me, and uh, and uh, some of you see it, and I feel it. I feel it. This is this just an incredible presence of God. I tell you, I, I told people when they came back, I said, I'm a different man. I'm a changed man. He didn't know any of this. So many things, man. It was his. The word was so accurate. No one t- times during the service, he would turn over me. So you understand who it is. You heard me talk about Smith Wigglesworth. Smith, this man's name is Jens Garnfeld from Denmark. He's an amazing man of God. You heard me talk about Smith Wigglesworth. He is referred to as the apostle of faith in our generation. The way God used him was just, has been almost unparalleled with signs and wonders and miracles. Um, and he was so devoted to God. He just totally lived for God. And he paid the price for the anointings on his life. Number two, then he had a man under him named Howard Carter. Howard Carter was his uh, protege and his mentorship. As the number, he passed a number of people. With this man, he reproduced himself in him. And then Lester Summerall came up on the tutelage of Howard Carter. And Lester Summerall is Jens Garfield's spiritual father. So you'll see the, yeah, wow. So you'll see the connection. The Holy Spirit showed me that there. And uh, there's something to be had on this anointing. You have to, you know, you can have one person come up and receive, another person receive nothing, absolutely at all. It's totally upon your expectation. You have to place the demand on the gift of God. And uh, oftentimes, I remember here, we would start at uh, those who were part of, of Christian Growth Center years ago. It was a wonderful thing. Pastor Robin and uh, Trish would always do. We'd say, make a demand on the gift. They would instruct the people, make a demand on the gift. Don't you leave from here what God sent you here with for me. I'm making a demand on it. Somebody say, make a demand. demand. You reach inside of him and take every good spiritual thing that God has for you, that God's purpose for your life. You take a, uh, make a demand upon it. You receive it in your life in Jesus' name. You have to receive it. And that's what Jesus was talking about when he said, uh, Jesus said, he said, there was many, there was many lepers. He said, but why was Naaman the Syrian only one that got healed? He said, there was many people in the day of the famine, but why did the one that got the, one got the pots? You know, why was she the only one that had the, had it replenished and God saved her house, what have you? It's according to your faith. So there's a, I want to, and I want to minister here today. We're headed into a season here of the holiday season. We've been ministering on the subject of, of, uh, of wholeness. This past Tuesday night, we had our church service. Uh, from, from our Sunday service last week that was canceled. Uh, God bless every one of you that came and for all of our people that served that night. And, uh, and I know that we, we the, our church is in need of revival. This was the area where I had to rethink my thinking. God reshaped the landscape of my thinking on it. I kind of despise the subject of revival because most people use, use it uh, as, a, as a metaphor of God saving their life kind of a thing when the purpose of revival is not to keep you close to the Lord. You do that through your daily regimen every day. You don't need a revival to save you and keep, me, keep you from going back out and sin. What revival does is right, re- revival reconnects your heart to the heart of the Father. Yeah. Revival brings your heart back to where it used to hold as a priority. Yeah. Things you used to hold dear in your life that you don't hold dear anymore. Yeah. Things where you let things slip. Beware that you let those things. Revival, revival will make the voice of your pastor relevant to your life again. That's right. I don't sound like wonk, 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 wonk. All of a sudden, you start hearing me again. You start, and, and the lives of, and the voice of the people that God puts in your life. You're listening to me here today. And the Holy Spirit wants to awaken you here today. And you'll see that over in, um, over in Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Let's turn over there real quick. Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Today, I've ministered as a subject, or as a topic here today, of the, the, the Prince of Holiness. If you go here today to, um, if you look over here today, where did I tell you to go to? Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12, verse 27. I have to purposely not get in a hurry here. I'm going to 
just want to share a few things here with you here today as we've got us to do something supernatural in your life. We've been ministering on the subject of the glory of God, the fire of God, and wholeness in your life. Wholeness is the will of God for your life. And uh, you've got to give God access to your life, though. That's what, and that's what that word was about. That thing, dear Lord, a little snidbit, that Holy Ghost Heaven commercial that he gave you a while ago. That's what that was about. Give God access to your life. Give him access to your life. Here in Hebrews, the 12th chapter, of verse number 27, said, In this word, y'all have it? And this word yet once more signifies the movement of those things that are shaken, removes those things that are shaken as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken, they shall remain. And other things that are established and eternal in your life. And all shaking does, shaking doesn't work against you, it works for you in a more eternal rate of glory. Shaking reveals the stuff that you've got in your life that can't be shaken. And it said, that's what this is Now look at here what it goes on down. Verse number 28. It said, wherefore we receive the kingdom which cannot be moved. Hallelujah. Say, that's the kingdom. I mean, some of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. So the shaking reveals what's of the kingdom of God in your life. Are you listening to me? The shaking reveals what's in your kid of the kingdom of God in your life. It said, wherefore you receive the kingdom which cannot be shaken. Let us have grace. Let us have grace. Whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. May there be reverence and godly fear in the house of God again. And they say this shaking does that. Secondly, now look at this here. What else happens? Verse number 29. For our God is a consuming fire. Shaking always precedes the manifestation of the fire of God. All fire. And fire does a number of things. I'm not going to re-preach Tuesday night's message. Uh, I was ministering on this on, on, on Tuesday night. The, the effect of fire in your life. One thing fire does is remove the impurities. If you'll turn with me to 1 Corinthians, the third chapter. I showed us here today. I've been ministering on this subject. And I want to uh, give room for the supernatural in your life. I almost, I almost um, uh, backed away from this. So I've been having so many miracles. I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing all this. You'd say, well, I don't believe that, Pastor. I don't care what you believe. My experience is never at the mercy of your mere argument. Right. I'm, I'm walking this. I, I share, I had all these, I was having these problems with my body, just different stuff. I know some just not getting sleep, push myself, and, and just, diff, just, just stuff. God, take care of myself. Get a little older, you have to do it, take care of yourself more. And uh, some of just attack of the enemy and just different stuff. And uh, I got in here, man, and uh, got in here and started receiving from this. I, start, I became the first partaker of this soon, Ash. So I start receiving it first. Did you hear that word he spoken? I, I didn't even think about it. Uh, Apostle Garfield uh, said, he said, you will not come preaching the message. He said, you will be the message. Man, uh, that's powerful. You got to catch that. That's what, and that's what Paul said. Paul said, you will be a letter written. You are an epistle. Your life speaks to people. You won't just go preaching a message. You'll be the message. And man, this thing's been operating my life. I had this problem. I've shared a little bit with you about it. I've got no testimony since then. I had three doctor's reports last week. And one of them is because I just I kept casting moving around. And uh, that's my main one. And then the next morning I had a meeting with the orthopedic surgeon after they looked at my MRI and seen how I'm doing this, that, and the other blah, blah, blah. I haven't had I ain't had no surgery, not gonna have any. If I need it, if you need surgery, use your faith and have it. If you need it and you can't believe supernaturally, blah, 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 and they can correct it with surgery, then believe God for it. Don't be afraid of surgery. Don't be afraid of nothing. Doctors are not your enemy. I mean, use your faith. You're taking pills. You're taking pills, medicine. How many of y'all take medicine? I'll take one prescription. Use your faith. Whatever we do, we do it by faith. Whatever you do, do it by faith. You know, it ain't, it ain't a sin to, have, to take medicine or have surgery or go through therapy, anything else. And uh, I got in there, and, and then after that, I was headed to the chiropractor. We have, a, we have an incredible chiropractor. He's a, a good man of God, good man of God over here in Blacksburg. And um, so I had those three appointments. One appointment, I really wasn't looking forward to it. Um, I went in, I was sitting there talking to him. It's been so long since I talked to him. I thought he may beat me up a little bit. I thought he may rough me up a little bit. <laughs> I, know how, I know how Pat's going to take it. You know? I thought he may rough me up a little bit. And um, so we got in there, man came in, my, and my doctor report was just so good. He took my blood, blood pressure. She said, man, this is good. I, I, and I wanted to tell her, this is the fire. I, 
I don't, she, I don't know if she can understand it. This may just be wasted time to be trying to explain it to him. The natural mind doesn't understand spiritual things. Matter of fact, it's foolishness into them. That's what Paul said in First Corinthians 2. How many of you have ever made the mistake of trying to share something spiritual with somebody natural minded? And some of them sitting up in church. If you're sitting up in church, you shouldn't be, shouldn't be carnal minded, dominated by your carnal mind. You ought to be able to understand. You ought to have, you know what? The first thing that takes, the first thing that must take place in your spiritual growth is an appreciation for spiritual things. I just, I just have an openness to God. That's all. I just have an openness. And I'm going to let God work and speak in my life. That's just where it starts. Just with a, a, a godly openness. And, um, got in there and, uh, we went on through the thing. We sitting there talking about how oh, we so long since we have, I've been in there. It was my fault. It's not his. And, um, uh, sitting there and man, I don't know, man, how long has it been? Colette says, I don't know. And my report's so good. He said, man, go back, come back yet. No year from now. Man, my blood pressure and everything had been so out of kilter, blood sugar, this, that, and the other weight and everything like that. And mastering my weight too. God wants, God wants, I'm telling you what, God is bringing you into a place of mastery. Yes. You need to hear what I'm saying here today. Yes. God wants to bring you into a place of mastery. Yes. Some of you are going to have to make some adjustments, but you can expect the fire to burn. Yes. I mean, call it, you'll call it down on everything you, everything you submit to God, the fire is coming down on it. The fire only comes where a sacrifice is made. Yes. If you, you yield yourself here to God, if you yield yourself to God for change here today, you can expect the fire. Try to tell your neighbors that you would expect the fire. You can expect the fire. It comes with a yielded life. Got there after that, and then I had, I was with uh, the ortho next morning. It came in, laid his right me up. And what about that shoulder now? You remember that shoulder felt like it was coming out of joint? This, that, and the other. He was having the pain, this, that, and the other. I said, she said, how's it doing? I said, I don't, uh, I'm fine. She said, when was the last time you had pain? I said, it's been so long, I can't remember. She said, how's it right now? You got it? I said, it feels fantastic. I said, which shoulder was it? I'm trying. I couldn't remember. It's just, it's gone. It's gone. Shoulders don't heal like that. They don't just heal like that. And went on. I said, and I was trying to. And then she said, well, the doctor being. She said, well, she said, she said, Lord, little next. She said, well, what are you, what are you doing? I said, it's the word and prayer. And she said, that works. I said, hey, amen, it does. And the doctor came in after a while, and he said, really? He said, I think you're going to be the shortest appointment I got today. I said, I'm just walking. I'm stepping into wholeness. And the congregation, the congregation, you expect this. This is my prayer for every one of you. For every one of you. For every one of you. That what I'm experiencing, you experience it in your life. If you've got stuff the doctor said, it ain't never going to go away. Hold on. Give the glory of God a chance. Let the God who answers by fire, let him be God. And he said, man, he took me to a whole range and he was asking me to push and lift and do something. He said, man, you, he said, you are completely whole. I said, I told you that to get into the play, man. I'm totally whole. I'm totally healed, man. That shoulder was coming out, finally was coming out of joint, popping in pain. I was telling Colette, it's this shoulder, I'm totally healed. This glory, this fire of God. The fire of God will burn out anything that's not like God. It'll do it. This is real. And you can expect this in your life. I mean, you've got financial problems and you've, you've just got uh, financial curses and stuff hanging around in your life. And some of y'all can correct that with stewardship. Some of y'all can correct, uh, can, can correct that with stewardship. And some of you are going to have to deal with, some of y'all are going to have to go there. You're going to have to hold, you have to stretch forth the withered hand and give God access to the stuff that you typically hide. This is real. Oh, I'm, I'm, well, I don't think so. I'm, I'll keep going. If I miss it, you tell me. <laughs> oh, baby. Come on, honey. She said, I don't take care of myself. But, uh, yeah. We went on. I tell you what. We came, on, we, came on, we came on through that appointment. We had another supernatural manifestation. Supernatural manifestation of God. We came on, we came on through there. And then I had, I went to see more. Uh, see the uh, chiropractor and the guy told me he said you don't ever need you don't ever need to come back it's just totally gone it's just this stuff just totally gone and i did something i injured my back i was had a truck tire i was throwing big old truck tires up at duncan suzuki and i snatched that thing up i didn't realize how heavy it was i snatched it and threw it and twisted my body man it's you've hurt your back and you knew you did i said oh my god went to the chiropractor i'm just totally healed totally healed totally healed 
And man, and, um, I'm totally free from it. He popped things back in place. He heard it was gone back. And just everything about me that's been out of kilter is coming in alignment. Everything. Everything. And I'm not, I'm not settling for anything less than wholeness. Don't think this is, well, this is going, this kind of runs in my family. Take its shoes away. It's in our family tree. You're in a different tree now. This is real. This is very real. Went on, but the last, the last thing was out. The jury was still out. They had taken my lab work on my blood work. And they were getting ready to diagnose me diabetic and everything. Well, I said, no, I don't receive that. that. My weight was up. I changed that. This, that, and the other. Blase, blase, blase. And just anxiety and stuff. So I got in there and the blood work, hadn't got the blood work. And I said, Everything, everything's coming back. Everything's coming back. Roses, 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 roses. I said, blood work ain't come. I said, blood work ain't come back yet, though. And I'm sitting at the mentor's corner on Thursday, Brother Gibbs. I didn't even say anything about it while we were talking. It popped up on there. They said, your blood work is back. You need to call the office. Well, man, if she was trying to comfort me, she missed. <laughs> man, you don't tell nobody nothing like that, you know. Your blood work is back. Call the office. I said, man, what in the world? And I called her back. She said, well, I just called to tell you. I said, your, your blood sugar and everything is great. Man, you're improved, man. You're just man, doing fantastic. There ain't no problem here. There's no need to do nothing. You're just all doing great. I guess they didn't come across in your message on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> one thing after another, they're coming into alignment. And this is what you can precisely expect to happen in every one of your lives. Yeah. I'm praying, I'm believing for the supernatural manifestations of God in your life. I'm standing real steady. I'm standing real steady and believing for wholeness in every one of your lives. I'm standing real steady. I'm not moving. I'm not moving. I'm standing, stand still. Submit yourself to the Lord. Resist the devil and the devil. How God anointed Jesus who went about doing good, healing all those who were oppressed of the devil. I'm believing God for every one of your body and hormonal balances in your body to come into alignment. I'm believing for every financial curse that's operating in your life. Every relationship failure and all the stuff has tried to impose its way, impose its will in your life. I'm believing in the name of the Lord Jesus. That the Prince of Holiness manifests himself in every area of your life. Be made whole. In the name of Jesus. Nothing missing. Nothing broke. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet. I speak to every curse in your life. Every abnormality. Every deficiency. Everything broken. Everything that needs to be fixed. In the name of Jesus. May it be replaced. And may it be restored. In Jesus' name. You received that shout out wholeness. Wholeness. Okay, I'll be seated. Let me get started here. I, can get, I need to get rolling here. Fire. Fire is one of the manifestations of the glory. And when the glory of God begins manifesting, you'll see this all through Jesus' ministry. We'll go back to Mark 5 here real quick. You can expect this in your life. Well, I had bad academic problems when I was in starting school. Part of that was called the relationship I had in my life. I had two, I had two boat anchor relationships in my life. I was at Whitfield Community College. I was not properly academically prepared for a college, a college career. And when I came into there, when I came into there, uh, I was struggling 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.2, this, that, and the other. And when I start turning my heart towards the Lord, supernatural stuff that happened. I went from a 1.1 grade point average to Dean's List at Virginia State University and stayed there. The glory of God will affect the brain cells in your brain. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. You've got arthritis and stuff there from you. Hold on, hold on. Don't get on Facebook telling everybody about that. You get in the mirror of the word and let the mirror of the word tell you who you are. Amen. The first step in true spiritual prosperity is when you start believing what God says about you. You've got to believe what God says about you. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. And there's some stuff to run sometime in your family. Different things like that. I believe the three sweaters. I believe Jeremiah Lane and I have got the three nicest sweaters. Y'all stand up real quick. Stand up real quick. Real quick. Real quick. Real quick. Turn and look at the congregation. This is what happened. This is what happens when you go to Walmart and get your sweater. Somebody shout out to everybody got one. These are the three best. So girls don't need no judges. That's what we already got that sided. We already got sided. Y'all going with something else now. The glory of God will affect the change. Say that out loud. The glory of God will affect the change. The manifestation of the very presence of God. One of the ways it manifests is in the fire of God. Jesus experiences in his ministry. I want to show you here today that we're called to be bearers of the very presence of heaven. And that is the glory of God. 
We're called to be bearers and carriers of the very presence of heaven. We have this very treasure in earth and vessels. 2 Corinthians 4 verse number 7. We have this treasure from time to time. If you, pray, if you go around acting like your mom and them, your shoe size and your color, you'll never experience the promises of God. But when you begin to renew your mind, to who you've been made to be in Christ Jesus. Oh, sicky, sicky now. All things are possible to him that believeth. Amen. And man, you have to step out of yourself and start becoming who God has called you to be in Christ Jesus. I'm going to show you that here today. First Corinthians 3rd chapter, I want to show you something here. And I begin to manifest this. And I'm, I'm, every little thing, when things are wrong with my body, I've got something, I've got some, a couple of issues here at my health. I told you, I'm a, uh, what was it? It was uh, the chiropractor. The chiropractor said, uh, he said, what did you do with your back? I said, well, I killed, uh, I said, I killed, uh, uh, man, I'll tell you what, let me tell you what happened. When I got that message from the doctor's office, she said, we looked at your blood work, called the office. Man, why, you, why would you just drop me? Why would you just say that like that? Man, I, I can't explain the craziness that went through my head. I, all the kind of stuff went through, man, I was thinking cancer and all the, man, all this kind of crazy stuff. And, and it wasn't, those are not my thoughts. I'm in agreement with what God says about me. His thoughts are my thoughts. He said, my thoughts towards you are good and not evil. Thoughts of peace, thoughts of shalom. God said, when I think of you, I think of nothing missing and nothing broken. I believe what God says about me. Come on, say that out loud. I believe what God says about me. He said, my thoughts towards you are shalom. My thoughts are nothing missing and nothing broken. They got around Jesus' ministry, man. When people were, Jesus was ministering, he's praying, ministering, anointing, the glory of God manifesting on Jesus. And the Bible said the halt and the main people are crippled and people have missing body parts. Everybody got healed. Everybody was made whole. Yes. Missing body parts and stuff, man, man. I'll tell you what, God will, God will heal you anywhere you hurt. Yes. If there's something missing, you'll replace it. If there's something broken, he'll fix it. Yes. Be made whole. Wholeness is a byproduct of the atmosphere of heaven, the glory of God. You've seen people suffer sometimes. You ever had a person who's suffering from a sickness or a disease, they're struggling, can't seem to get well? At the time, man, there's sometimes you need to release people and let them go. Because the moment they step over in the glory, boy, everything's going to be all right. Because the glory of God, now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying wait till you get to heaven to experience the glory. No, no, I'm saying just the opposite of that. You need to experience the glory now. Yeah. And the Bible said the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. Why? Because we got it walking around on people's lives. I'm praying for manifested signs and wonders by the glory. Fire on your life. Manifestation of the glory of God. Academically, physically, spiritually, emotionally, socially, every area of your life. The glory of God. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. The presence of God. We were called to live. Adam had it on his life. And when he had the, the Hebrew word Ichabod, it means the glory has departed. When he had lost the presence of the glory. When Eve ate of the fruit of the, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they had turned the license and the authority that they had to the earth over to Satan. God was not in control. Now the devil was in control. In Matthew 4 and Luke 4, when, when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, he said, if you bow, Satan said to Jesus, if you bow your knee now to me, I'll give you all these kings of the earth. Jesus said, that's not yours. It was his. And Jesus knew it was. He said, I come. Come to get it back. But God's got a plan. You don't. I'm in the kingdom of light. You're in the kingdom of darkness. I'm going to show you here. God wants to manifest fire in your life and bring holiness to your life. Fire removes stuff that's not like God in your life. If you've got access. Let the fire burn in your attitude. There's hope for that attitude you have. Claudine was just awarded, what well, she said, most likely to have a good response or a, a positive response. How many of you would win the award amongst your peers, most likely to mess up the atmosphere in the office? <laughs> or most likely to say the wrong thing? You want to be known as the one that when you say something, something good happens. That's right. That's right. Ephesians 4, 29 and 30. We are bearers of his glory. The very presence of God. Here in 1 Corinthians 3rd chapter, I need, to, I need to move along. 1 Corinthians 3rd chapter. 
Man, this is powerful right here. Look at this. In verse number 10, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as the wise master builder, I've laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is in Christ Jesus. Verse 12. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, look at the look, 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 look. gold, silver, precious stone. This is in your Bible. This is in your Bible. Gold, silver, precious stone, wood. Hey, and so stubble ain't even fit to be thrown into the fire. It's worthless. At least you can take wood and build furniture with it, and hay will feed it, be feed the beasts of the field, and you can bed, it can bed with it. It went from honor to dishonor. Look at this. This house determined. This is what determines those, those categories and the quality of your life. Quality. This is the beam of seat judgment. No one's lost here. These are all believers. He's all believers. It's a precious thing. It's a real award ceremony. It's like some of you, some of y'all just on the team. How many of y'all seen some guys on the NBA team and they got a ring? They got a ring because the team won a championship. But man, they ain't never break the minutes. They ain't never got in. They ain't got no minutes. But they was on the team. They ain't on the team. Some of y'all stand in front of Jesus and say, Lord, God, Lord, I ain't never do nothing for you, but I was on the team. <laughs> no, 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 no. I want Jesus to say, when I want something to get done, I got a man with a church down there in Fairlawn, Virginia. And that's what I said about Caleb in, 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 over in uh, Numbers, the 14th chapter. He said, oh, but my servant Caleb, he said, he hath obeyed me fully. He has a different spirit. I'm praying today that you'll be consumed by a different spirit. Spirit of obedience unto God. And that that submitted life calls the fire down on your life. And when that fire starts consuming your life, this is what happens. You'll start reconciling your heart back towards the loss. You'll start bringing you back to stuff that used to hold dear to your life. It's a spiritual regimen in your life. Here in this judgment right now, I would, I would recommend to you, don't wait until the beam of seat judgment to let the fire establish where your works are. Let's let the fire burn now. Hey, isn't this awesome? And, said, and that's what he went on and said down there. He said, because it shall be revealed by what? Fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort of turn me to Mark the fifth chapter. I'm ready to close this out here today. Man, it's just powerful. Over in uh, Mark the fifth chapter, powerful, powerful, powerful. Man, I want to show this other this other scripture here. It parallels First Corinthians ten. This is powerful. This is 2 Timothy. If you write this down, 2 Timothy 2, verse number 20. I'm not even going to read it out of the King James. I'm going to read it out of the Passion Translation. In a palace, you find many kinds of containers and tableware for many uses, for different uses. Some are beautifully inlaid with gold or silver, but some are made of wood, of earthenware or clay. Some of them are used for banquets and special occasions, and some for everyday use. But you, Timothy, must not see your life and ministry this way. Your life and ministry must not be disgraced, for you are to be a pure container of Christ and dedicated to the honorable purposes of your master, prepared for every good work that he gives you to do. Verse 22, run as fast as you can from all the ambitions and lust of youth, and chase after all that is pure. Whatever builds up your faith and deepens your love must become your holy pursuit. And live in peace with all those who worship our Lord Jesus Christ with a pure heart. Amen. So he used the analogy of being tried, tried by fire in the different kind of containers was something that Paul made reference to numerous times in his teachings. If you look over here in Mark, the fifth chapter, I want to parallel this with uh, uh, Isaiah, the ninth chapter, verse 6. Just write this down. Isaiah, the ninth chapter, verse number 6. One of the names it gives for Jesus when it's talking about his birth. Matter of fact, let me read that out to you. Isaiah, the ninth chapter. You don't have to turn there. I'll just read it to you. You, you make a note over in Mark 5. Isaiah, the ninth chapter, verse number 6. He said, for unto us, a child is born. We're going into Christmas, so we're appropriate, isn't it? Unto us, a child is born. Unto us. A son is given. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name, his name. It didn't say his name will be. It says his name shall be called 
All of these were references to the name of Jesus. And his name, the name of Jesus, shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. Now look at the last one, last title, the Prince of Peace. Peace, that word peace in the Hebrew, same way Jeremiah 29, 11. My thoughts towards your peace is shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken. He's the prince of wholeness. That's where the title of this message comes. The prince of wholeness. Have you received the prince of wholeness into your life? It said in his name shall be called the prince of wholeness. Over in Colossians, the second chapter, verse number 10. You need to highlight this and write this down far beyond this message this morning. Far beyond this day. This needs to become a part of your spiritual library. It says we've been made complete in him. When you come in Christ Jesus, now you say, well, I've got things that are not lined up with the word. We have to take the word and cast down things that are contrary to what God says about you. But it says we are made complete in him. Or in other words, in Christ Jesus, we are licensed and, and authorized to walk in wholeness. You have the responsibility for ushering in the wholeness of God. What is, what is wholeness? I want to show this here today in Mark, the fifth chapter. What a powerful thing. Jesus is referred to as the prince of wholeness. The prince of nothing missing, nothing broken. Over in Mark, the fifth chapter, verse number 21, when Jesus was passed over again by the ship to the other side, many people gathered him and nigh and was close to the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell down on his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter, lie at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay your hands upon her, and she shall be healed. She shall live. Jesus went with her, verse 24, and much people followed him and thronged him. Verse 25, highlighter ring pen. Highlighter ring pen, verse 25. And a certain woman was had an issue of blood 12 years. Verse 26. And had suffered what? Many things. What is talking about many things? They were experimenting with her. The desperation, humiliation that comes from someone experimenting with you. It happens all the time. Doctors do this in, in, a, in an attempt to help people. But there was a negative side of that. And that is becoming a guinea pig. Matter of fact, back in the early, um, early days in Great Britain, there were two brothers that were famous for uh, their, the particular maneuver they got for sitting on people's uh, shoulders and how position your toes, your feet, and everything, and choking people to death. They were getting street people out on the street without homes, and they were suffocating them, killing them, and selling them to the mortician for them to experiment on the body, remove body parts. They were selling them, you know. And... Uh, it said this woman had suffered many things. They were experimenting. They were so desperate. They were, they, they have just, they were experimenting with her. Trying to stop this flow of blood in her life. I want to show you here today. There's a multiplicity of complications here in this woman's life. Not just this disease. There's a lot of other stuff going on here, man. There's a lot of negative stuff, man. It just eats and erodes away at your identity and your self-esteem. It says she couldn't go. She can't go out in public. And look at this here. Look at what it says, says about her. Verse 26, she suffered, suffered many things of many physicians, many things of many physicians. Somebody say desperation. desperation. And had spent all that she had. And was still not better, but rather actually grew worse. So she's messed up financially. Man, she's all of her resources. She's getting money from somewhere. She's a business lady or got a husband's got a business or something's got family money, got something. Man, how does the world she keep going? But she finally had exhausted all of her financial resources. And here she is in the presence of the Prince of Holiness. <laughs> what about shame? They couldn't come out public if a woman had an issue of administration with a blood cycle, what have you, and she can't control the blood flow, this, that, and the other, she would have to stay in. Same way with lepers, ostracized from society. So here she is, shame. She's sick. She's broke. But she's also standing in the presence of the Prince of Holes. Yeah. 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 And everything's about to change. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to tell you here today, if you'll reach out and touch him today, yeah. everything's about to change. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So she's got shame on her life. She got financial devastation in her life. She's got that physical disease slowly destroying her body. She's been rejected. Mom, she got rejection. She got shame. She got poverty. And she got sickness and disease. But she also had an audience with Jesus. Yeah, 
She was standing in the presence of the Prince of Holiness, the Prince of Shalom, the presence of the one with nothing missing, nothing broken. Look at this. Remember, I to mention that time. How many of you remember that teaching I was talking about? Uh, the stages of the word musing muttering saying unto how many of you remember that musing muttering to musing you're thinking over it just thinking over it it means to intentionally consider something I've told two or three people this week in counseling sessions I'm just if you just clean the slate you don't have to be able to figure everything out if you just clean the slate and let God deal with your heart you don't have to figure it you don't have to figure it out you have a savior you don't have to figure it out he's a wonderful counselor mighty God prince of faith Amen. Thank you, Lord. you don't have to forget all out. Get, get that off of you. That's not your responsibility. But it is your responsibility to clean the slate. And give, and, give God, and give God open access to talk and speak to your heart. Lord, this is powerful. This woman came to a place of brokenness in her, in her life. Musing, muttering. Muttering begins to say within yourself or without. Say within. Say, and, and it actually goes on to say that she said within herself. If you go on down there, it says she suffered many things, many physicians. When you heard of Jesus, verse 27, coming, him in the press behind, she touched his garment. For she said, if I'm able to touch his garments, I shall be made whole. Another one of the other scriptures, one of the other passages, one of the other gospels, she said, she was said within herself. She had been thinking on this thing deliberately for some time to the point that it moved her to act on it. Faith without works is dead, but faith with works is alive. She got up. She said, if I can just but touch his clothes, I shall be made what? Whole. And straightway, little verse 29. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her blood, she felt in her body that she was healed of that plant. Verse 30. And the, and the next year, gradually? No, no, no. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? His disciples said to him, said, you see all this crowd around you, pressing in you, banging in you, beating around. We're trying to protect you from them. You ask, who's touching you? And you go ask the question, who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. Verse 33, the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Father, his daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. What was missing? Has been replaced. What was broken has been fixed. Your faith has made you whole. I'm here to tell you today. Your faith will make you whole. You've got to find out the promise of God. That covers the problem that you have in your life. You've got to put it in your heart. Get it coming out of your mouth. And start getting in agreement with what God has to say about you. Over your finances. In whatever area of your life. The Bible gives us so many promises. What about your harmony in relationship? The Bible tells us that God will give us rest round about. How many of y'all got some neighbors and stuff you'd like to see get out of the neighborhood? If they can't get transformed, you'd like to see them get out of the neighborhood. We had to pray people out of the neighborhood before, man. We had stuff going on. This house across the street, I finally called the popo. I let them do what they do. I said, man, they got drug deals, prostitution, and stuff going on. Man, this man, this stuff going on over here. I said, but they got to go because God promised me rest round about. You need to hear what I'm saying. Rest round about. What's the part? It's all part of wholeness. Wholeness is not just your body being healed. Je one encounter with Jesus. One encounter with Jesus. One encounter with Jesus. When she grabbed a hold of the hem of his garment and made connection with the covenant. You need to make your receiving from God a matter of a covenant. And that's what he said in one of the other gospels. Jesus said, ought not this woman see that she's a daughter of Abraham? He make it a matter of covenant. How can you receive from God? Make it a matter of covenant. When David stood out there in front of Goliath, the first thing that came out, out of his mouth was, you would circumcised feel a shame. Right. Too many of you are trying to face the giants in your life without making it a matter of covenant. You need to say, we receive healing because we have a covenant with God. You can expect your household to be saved because you have a covenant with God. You can expect your finances to flow because you have a covenant with God. Be made whole in the name of Jesus. So this woman stands here in the presence of the Prince of Wholeness. He took away her shame. She can rejoin society. She no longer separates. She's been reconnected. She no longer had this dreadful, deadly disease and abnormality in her body. She's been healed of this disease, this plague. And he has shut down the thing that's been taking her money from her. Somebody say amen. amen. I pray wholeness over every one of you here today. 
As we get into this season of celebrating Jesus next week, we're, we're targeting the birth of Jesus. Let the Prince of Holiness be born in your life. Give him access to your thinking. He wants to prosper the work of your hands. Come on. God wants to give you some unusual. You think you do all the incredible stuff you do because I'm all this. You ain't nothing good except God, the God of all goodness, did it for you and did it through you. If you've got a gifting and enabling, something that prospers you and raises you up, it's because the goodness of God. Every good and perfect gift comes down from above. If you've got any good thing, I'm preaching real good right now. If you've got any good thing going on in your life, you better believe it came down from above. Amen, amen, and amen. Holiness for all of your life. Holiness for all of your life. Take away your shame. Took away her rejection. Took away the sickness. Restoring her financial flow in her life. Be made whole in the name of Jesus. I'm praying today in this season that you'll open up your heart to the Prince of Wholeness. And let the fire burn the stuff that needs to be burned. And let all the impurities and things be written, stripped out of your life. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray throughout all this congregation today. By the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let wholeness flow. And let the fire burn. The fire that tries. And the fire starts categorizing stuff. It starts categorizing wood, silver. I mean, gold, silver, precious stone, wood. Hey, so it starts categorizing all of our life. Father, I pray through all this congregation. Let the fire burn. Let the fire burn. That reveals anything that's not like you. Father God, that let the shaking take place we're open to it shake our world up shake our world up our father i pray today there'll be a re-examination of priorities all through this congregation a real divine openness in the life of every person today move out the power of the holy spirit accomplish your will and your plan y'all receive this prayer here today father i ask you today in the name of the lord jesus all through this as the altar ministry team comes i pray today by the power of the holy spirit god you do your supernatural work in the life of everyone everyone present Manifest your goodness, your power, and your glory in Jesus' name. Reveal yourself. Reveal yourself. He, he ain't a baby in a manger. He's the Prince of Wholeness working in my life. Not a baby in a manger. He's the Prince of Wholeness operating in life. I pray this over every one of your lives here today. In Jesus' name, by the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit, be made whole. In Jesus' name, Prince of Wholeness. Give him access over into your life. Like Gary Lewis was sharing earlier, those areas, don't water down certain areas. No, no, let, let the fire burn. Just let it burn. Let it go to every area of your life. Let the Prince of Wholeness reveal himself to you. I pray today that God will make your life proof of the very atmosphere of heaven because of the goodness of God. I hear the word prevail. I'm praying here today, today that every one of you will prevail regarding God's plan for your life. I'm praying that you will prevail. If you receive it, say so. I'm praying that you will prevail regarding God's plan for your life. So fire, let the fire, Father, let the fire burn in the life of every person here today. The altar ministry team is present here today. The ministry team, number one, if you're not saved here today, if you're not saved here today, everybody's going to know that. They may not know it now, but they will know it. Man, that's an easy fix. Jesus already took care of that. You can receive him today. Number two, if you're Christian, but you've got this incredible distance between you and God, close that distance today. That's yours and that's mine to do. Number three, you want to be baptized with the Holy Spirit? You need further prayer in your life? You want to become part of this church family? You need to get locked in? Put your roots down start growing in the things of God? Manifesting good work? Altar ministry team. First here today. Be a blessing to you. Thank you for you.